Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio, and in this particular demo, we have this puzzle game, but there's nothing going on just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and create this enemy spike. We're gonna animate it scaling up, and then we're gonna animate it scaling down. And we're gonna do that with Playmaker. And if you're ready to create an enemy, let's go. So here we're back in Unity, and I wanna go ahead and create a enemy. So we have this puzzle board. We have a character that we can move, and we need to do something that's kind of exciting. Um, to make this more of a game. So what I'm gonna do is to create an enemy spike. And then we're gonna take that spike, and we're gonna make it a prefab, and then we can reuse it over and over throughout our game. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use Pro Builder for this. I'm gonna go ahead and click into my Pro Builder tab. And if you don't have Pro Builder, you can download that from the Package Manager. So Window, Package Manager, and then type in Pro Builder in the search, or just Pro in the search, and you'll find it. Then once you have that installed, you can open up Tools, Pro Builder, and then Pro Builder Window. Once you have that, then you can have this window that you can then dock anywhere. I just have it docked right here inside of my, with my hierarchy in my game. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new shape, and then a new shape is created. I already have in my shape editor a cone set up. So let's go ahead and look into my shape editor. So I'm gonna go into tools, pro builder, editors, and shape editor menu item. And here we go, we've got this other window and I can potentially dock this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it down here and dock this down below. And you can see that I have a cone set up as the, the type of shape that I want to build. Uh, by default, this will be set up as a cube, but again, so here are some different types of items that you can use. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use a cone. And currently, I have it set to have four sides. So it's like a pyramid. And then I have the radius set to 0.1. So it's 0.1 of one unit. And then I have the, the height as 0.3 because I think that looks pretty good for the relationship to the character. And then I had the number of sides set to four. So if I want this to be kind of a smooth, rounder uh, object, I would just increase the number of sides. So let's just do this. I'm gonna go into my hierarchy, double click on my cone preview. And here you can see what that cone kind of looks like. And if I increase the number of sides, it then becomes more round, uh, but I don't necessarily need it like, like that. I want it to be more, I don't know, angular and aggressive. So that's why I have it set to four sides. Cool, all right, so we've got that set up. I'm gonna go ahead and click build. So we're done with that. I can go ahead and close this shape window as well. Don't need that anymore. And I built two of those and I only really need one. So here we go, we've got this, this shape built. And what I wanna do is have it centered within one of these uh, panels, okay? So one of these tiles where my character moves. I think what I'm gonna do is to go ahead and create a new game object. I'm gonna create an empty game object and I'll call this enemy spike, okay? And then I'll take that cone and I'm gonna drag that inside of it, okay? So we have our enemy spike and then the cone inside. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that cone to spike, okay? And then I'm gonna just zero out the positioning here. So it is set to be at the zero position of our enemy kind of parent object. And then I just need to move this into place. Let's see exactly where that needs to go. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have our spike kind of set up. So I'm gonna create a new material and I am going to call that spike. And then I'm gonna take that material and drag it right onto my enemy spike right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and determine what this thing looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a red, reddish orange color just so that it has uh, kind of that aggressive feel to it. If we know something is kind of red, it's like danger. So I'm gonna keep it kind of in that realm. And I think that actually looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and just leave it at that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this spike and I'm gonna change the scale of it, okay? But 
if I change the scale of it, I don't want, if I change the scale of it, I want the kind of, I kind of want the user to know where that spike is going to be coming from. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this I'm inside this enemy spike parent object, I'm going to go ahead and create a new 3d cube. Okay. And that's a little on the big side. So we're going to go ahead and scale that cube down. Let's go ahead and go into our scale. We'll scale it down. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger than the spike itself. And then I'm going to take the, the Y value and make it small. Okay. So I'm going to take the Y value way down. Let's just make that like 0.01 and have it be something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so it's in the same kind of angular rotation as the spike. Okay. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to take the spike and when I scale it, you'll still see that little shape there. So that's going to let you know that that something's different about that particular tile. Okay. So it's letting the user know, Hey, this tile is different. There might be something wrong there. So be careful. And then, then we can have that spike pop up out of that, that space. Okay. So let's go ahead and first do this. I want to make this tile dark. So it's almost like a hole that the, the spike is popping out of. So I need to create another material. So I'm going to create a material and I'm going to go ahead and call that spike hole. And then I'm going to drag that onto my little cube. And then of course I need to change the look of that material and I'll change the name of that cube as well. Let's call this spike hole. And then that spike hole material, I'm going to go ahead and just make that black. Okay. Yep, so that lets us know that there's kind of a hole there for that spike to pop up out of. Cool. Okay, so let's make this spike actually animate up and down, and then we'll have it set as a prefab so that we can then drag in multiple of these spikes around our puzzle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is with my parent, parent spike object, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new FSM, okay? And what we're going to do with this is I'm going to do a short wait. So let's go random wait. So I'm going to have this, I'm going to have all these spikes not pop up at the same time, but I'll have them kind of pop up within a range of times. So we're going to do a random wait. Okay. So we'll add that action in and here we have that action and we have, we can set a min and max. So currently it's set to zero and in between zero and one second. I'm going to have that be a little bit different. Let's maybe go in between three and six seconds. And then once it's done waiting, we need to go to a finished event. So let's go ahead and add a finished transition. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and drag off to another state. And then here in our random wait, we also need to add finished. Okay. So inside of this next state, what is it we want to do? Well, we want that spike to actually pop up. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spike itself and let's decrease the size of that. So I'm going to currently make the scale at zero. Okay. So it looks like it's not there. It's still there, but it's, it just looks like it. And then in the the FSM for my spike parent in this second state, we want to actually make that spike go up. Okay. So we'll go state and I'm going to call this scale spike. Now there's several different ways that we can actually do this. We can do this with an animation, but I'm just showing you how to do it with Playmaker and cool. So we're going to scale our spike. So let's go ahead and type in scale. And you see, I've got an option here for tween scale. Okay. So that's meaning animating the scale. So we want to use that particular action. So I'm going to pop that in and it's saying, Hey, what game object do you want to scale? Well, the parent, the owner of this FSM is enemy spike, but we want to scale the spike that's inside of that parent. 
So instead of owner, I'm gonna choose specify game object and I'll choose spike, drag that in. And then we wanna change it from the current scale to uh, a new scale. So currently I wanna change it from one, one, or one, zero, one, because that's what our current scale is, one, zero, one. I wanna update that to be one, one, one. Okay, so I'm scaling the Y axis. And then we need to determine if there's a delay in there, what type of easing, so this is how fast it moves at the beginning of the animation and how fast it moves at the end of the animation. So it's gonna kind of start out slow and then move fast towards the end and this ease in. And there's a lot of different options here. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave it as the default, which is easy in quad. And how long do we want that animation to take? Well, I think one second's probably a little bit on the long side. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 0.5 as the time that I want that animation to take. So from being zero high to, to being one unit high. And then we need to determine if we want that to loop or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that off. We could use uh, one of the different types of looping options, but we wanna control this moving up. We wanna control moving down, and then we wanna wait, okay? So if I choose loop, it's just gonna continually move up and down. Now that could be one of the options that you want. But for me, I want there to be kind of a, some randomness to the animation. I'm gonna go to another state to set the scale back down, okay? So this works once we're done animating it. Let's go ahead and go to another finished event. So it's saying, hey, we don't have that on there yet. So let's go ahead and add it. Okay. And let's change this to be scale spike up. And I'm just going to duplicate this. So drop that down. And then instead of scale spike up, we're going to do a scale spike down. Okay. And then we're going to change from the current scale back down to one zero one. So it's a height of zero. Okay. Cool. And I think that all works. So we're going to go from spike up immediately into spike down. And then from spike down, we're going to go into our random weight. So here we're waiting a random amount of time in between three and five seconds, three and six seconds. Then it's gonna animate the, the scale of that up. Then it's gonna go to the next state, which scales it back down. Then we're gonna go to the final state, which is waiting again to start that process all over again. Okay, so let's give this a test to see how this looks. So let's, we're seeing our wait time right here. Boom, our little spike pokes up, then it goes back down and it does its wait again. And we can actually even add a little bit of a weight in between if we want to, the scale up and scale down. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this random weight right here, and drag that back in. We'll just call this weight. And let's just do a random weight in between maybe 0.5 and one second. And again, do a finish date. So we're gonna go random weight scale up, do another weight. Then we're gonna to go to scale down and then it's gonna go back to our random weight. So we got a nice little loop going on here. So let's try that out real quick. So here we're waiting just a little bit longer. So it pops up, then it goes back down. So we're having just, it, it kind of allows us to create a little more dynamic um, effect to this particular game object. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and make this a prefab. Okay, so for us to make this a prefab, we want to go ahead and drag our enemy spike over into our prefabs folder. Now that I have that, you can see that my enemy spike has now turned blue. That lets me know that it's a prefab. Then the cool thing is that I can take this prefab and just drag those into my scene. So here's my enemy spike. Drag those into my scene and you can see it's placed right here. So I, I can change that to a different location. So let's just move this one over here. And let's just go ahead and just duplicate. We'll maybe move one here. And because these all have random weights in the time, 
each of them is going to have their own time. And so they're not all going to poke up at the same time. They're all going to poke up at different times. So add some more dynamic movement to your, your enemy spikes. Let's give this a play and see how it looks. Yeah, I think that works pretty good. Now there's a lot more stuff that we can do to this, and I think this works for setting up a very first enemy. Hey, another great tutorial, and we, we built an enemy spike, we created it and made it into a prefab, and then we're also able to just drag that into our scene. Of course, we can go and then edit that prefab anytime we want to affect all of the different prefabs that are in our scene. And again, don't hesitate to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time, peace.